Now this tool is what you need to set up the clutch packs in your NP246 transfer case. And these are the three pieces that come with your uh, shim surface tool. It is the base, the weighted ring, and the measuring device. Okay, this is the oil restrictor plate, and that sits right on top of, of this surface, and it uh, helps deflect oil into these passages over here and get distributed into your clutches. Okay, so let's get this back on the table. Like so. And your drum comes in. Just like so. Sure sounded better. And let's see. That actually sits in there really nice. I like that. I don't think it's uh Not a whole lot of play to it. It sits in the groove really well. All right, that's a keeper. All right, so we have our drum, our hub, and this is a one-piece hub. It's not a two-piece hub. Some some of the older models, or even some of the newer models, come with a two-piece hub. Um, let's see. The next thing we want to do is put our clutch packs in, and we start off. We start off with a friction and then you put your steels in. All right, now they're all in. Now we grab our, our, our weight. And what, we, what we're trying to do is come up with a proper shim size. And like I said earlier, that between here and here is what we're measuring. Um, we have this bar. It sits right like so. And then you measure, you get, a, you get your uh, feeler gauge, okay, this is, a, this is one I've had for many years, it's a Cal van, made in the United States, uh, it's a, it's a, it's, I call it an abbreviated uh, feeler gauge, it doesn't have, you know, all the micro sizes, um, but anyway, you, uh, you measure there. You measure in three places, there, there, and over here, and then you average it out, and um, whatever number you come up with is what your shim size is to be, if that makes sense. All right, so there's one millimeter, there's 0.90 millimeters, I still got lots of room. So let's try let's try 20. All 
I can tell we're touching. And we got a pretty we got a pretty good feel there. So that's 20, uh, not 21, 2.1 millimeters. So now we move it to our second pad and we check it again. And that's pretty close. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there. third pad and that one's a little loose so we'll drop our 20 millimeter we'll pick up a 25 millimeter let's try that that's still a little loose Now I'm picking up the 30 millimeter. Still loose. Still loose. Getting closer. We actually had some touch there, but not by much. Now I'm, I'm pushing down on this just to pretty much stabilize it. And so I can get a constant feel on that feeler gauge. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a touch, not, not as much as on the other two. So that's a 60. Um, let's see, I'm going to put a 15, no, I'm going to put a, a 50 with a 15 millimeter and see if, see what we have. You know what, I'm going to, I'm going to put that 50, that 15 underneath the 50. That's that's it right there. So we have a 1, a 90, a 50, and a 15 millimeter. 15 thousandths of a millimeter. So that comes out to 2.55. Now what we're going to do is average those. Okay, so we'll take our Two point, actually, we can take our two point one. Uh, we'll make it four point two plus our two point five five, and that comes out to six point seven five. And then we'll divide that by three, and that gives us a shim of two point two five millimeters. All right, guys. As you can see, got one of got our new shims in. And uh, they've got kind of an edge to them, so I'm, I want to take that sharp edge off. And one way of doing it is get some 2000 grit sandpaper. And just go over it like so. And kind of take that take that edge off. Now, if it doesn't seem like it's doing much, you can also use a file. You got a flat file, and that'll make some pretty that'll make some pretty quick work of it. I'm really disappointed. Now, these are factory. These are, you know, factory uh, sold shims. Not even. It's not an aftermarket, and the quality is just not there. 
I can only imagine where they actually come from. Basically all I'm doing is just taking that edge off. And that way I'm guaranteed that it's going to sit flat. Now if I was, if I only had one shim, it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal. But being we have two, <clears throat> so one shim is going to be sitting on top of the other. We definitely want them to sit square on each other. Now you don't want to press so hard you bend the shim, just want to put enough pressure on there to smoothen everything out a little bit. Alright, <clears throat> now those two shims are, are uh, nice and smooth. So we put our shims on there and then we put our, our weight back on. out okay now after measuring all the, these three spots I turned up I came up with a a 0 0.05 millimeter 0 0.10 millimeter and a 0.2 millimeter 0 0.20 millimeter and if you average that out, you come out with just at 0.1166 millimeters, which is within our range of uh, acceptance. And uh, so that's where we're going to leave it. Um, that'll give us uh, that'll give us good pressure, but yet it won't uh, won't be too much that it will burn our clutches up. So that's uh, that's fantastic. Okay guys, I was reading through the manual and I happened to notice that they made reference to these tabs right here. Now, a minute, uh, the first time I put these in, I staggered them one, one row over each. So I had this one there, this one, you know, over one, the next one back. Anyway, I had them staggered, and uh, and that's not the way you're supposed to do. You're supposed they're supposed to line up in the in the channels like so. I don't know. I, I'm hoping you can see that. Um, so anyway, so I actually had to take them apart and redo them. Well, anytime you take them apart, you're supposed to remeasure. So now I'm going to remeasure it again.
Okay, well, <clears throat> I've, re I've remeasured everything and we're still within our um, ten thousandths, eleven thousandths of a millimeter uh, tolerance. Yes, point, point one zero millimeters or four hundred thousandths of an inch. So we're 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 there. Close enough for me. Alright. Let's see here. Okay. Now, next step would be to put our, our spring in. This is our clutch return spring. Then our apply plate. It's all nicely greased up and ready to go. There we are. Now what we need to do is put a put a uh, C clip on there. The half moon, if I'm not mistaken. Well, guys, I hope you got something out of this video. Uh, I wanted to do this one separate from the transfer case rebuild video because the, the clutch packs are a sub-assembly of the, of the transfer case, and it takes a special tool to, to, to complete this task. I not only wanted to show you how to rebuild the clutch pack, but also how to use a special tool. So with that said, if you liked the video, show me you liked it by hitting that like button. Uh, don't forget don't forget to subscribe as you can see in the background over here the transfer case is together I'm just trying to get all the video put together so that it makes sense. So anyway, be good have fun be safe